Grammarly is a lot more than a spelling corrector and grammar checker. Hi there, my name is Brian Collins. Welcome to the Become a Writer Today channel. So in this video, I'm going to walk through some of the key features inside of Grammarly, which will help you use it for more than fixing those spelling mistakes and grammar errors. I've been a Grammarly customer for years now, and it's a fantastic writing tool. And in this video, I'll explain how I'm using some of these Grammarly features for my work and also to edit work by other writers. If you do enjoy this overview of some of Grammarly's key features, I have extensive videos on the channel all about how to use Grammarly, set it up and get the most value from it. So be sure and go and check those out. And of course, if you have a question about Grammarly, ask me in the comments section below this video. So a lot of Grammarly users simply install the plugin for Chrome and they use it to fix grammar and spelling mistakes in their web browser. Don't stop there. You can use Grammarly across any application on your computer. To do it, simply log into app.grammarly.com. That's the Grammarly web app. And then you're going to go on to the app section on the left hand side. Now look for the option to download Grammarly for Mac or for Windows. Now you can use Grammarly across any writing application without having to worry about installing plugins or add-ons. Let me show you an example. On screen, I have the writing app Ulysses. Ulysses is a markdown writing app for Mac. Now you don't need to know what Ulysses is for the purposes of this video, but suffice to say, there's no official Grammarly plugin for Ulysses or for writing apps like this. But what if I still want to use Grammarly? Well, because I've installed the desktop app to my computer, I simply look for this floating icon. If I click on the Grammarly icon in my writing application of choice, Grammarly automatically pops up and I can work through the grammar and spelling suggestions that it proposes by clicking on the tooltip or working through them one by one. It works across any writing application. For example, here's Word. So I'm going to paste in the same article into Word and you'll notice that I haven't installed any plugins or add-ons, which was the old way of working with Grammarly. Again, I just simply click on the floating icon and up it pops. It's a real time saver. Now, I know you may be thinking, this is a little bit distracting. Sometimes I just like to write with all these crazy underlines beneath my words. Well, don't worry. Here's my next tip or feature that you may not know about. Simply click on the cog and you can turn it off in the writing application for 30 minutes, which should be more than enough for you to work through the suggestions. Or you could even turn it off indefinitely. If at any time you want to reactivate Grammarly within the writing application, just make sure firstly that it's running on your computer. And then look for the Grammarly icon in your taskbar or in your menu bar in my case because I'm on Mac. Then click on settings, go to block list and make sure that the application is not blocked by you or by your admin. And that actually brings me to my next Grammarly feature that you may not know about. So did you know you can use Grammarly to check for American, British, Canadian and now Indian English? There are subtle differences between all of these versions of the English language. So for example, in the United States, it's I realize with a Z and the United Kingdom, it's I realize with an S. Well, if you're writing for different audiences, you can use this feature to check or change how Grammarly proposes suggestions for you. Whether or not to use the Oxford comma is a real bone of contention with some writers. Depending on your preferences, you can turn this on or off in the customize section as well. You can also turn on or off rules related to spelling out numbers to how you use hyphens and so on. So if you find any of Grammarly's suggestions a little bit inaccurate or unhelpful, chances are you can customize it to suit your specific writing style. Did you know you can use Grammarly to create snippets? A snippet is basically a short piece of text that expands into something longer. And you can add snippets to Grammarly and this will save you a bit of time. It's comparable to other snippet tools like Text Expander. Let me show you an example. I've opened up Microsoft Word and now if I press the backslash key, it automatically opens up the snippet generator and I can browse through all of my snippets. So I have one abbreviation or snippet here already. B-A-W-T, which abbreviates or expands to become a writer today. And if I press this, it will automatically add to my Word document. So let me show you another example. At the end of the week, I like to look back and see what I've worked on and ask myself what I'm going to focus on during the following days. I ask myself a series of questions which I've put into Grammarly. So if I press the backslash and type in RV, it will open up my review snippet. Now, if I press enter, it will automatically put in a few questions that I ask myself as part of this review process. So if you find yourself typing out specific terminology or terms regularly, or you want a bit of a time-saving tool that you can use 
without having to use another snippet piece of software on your computer, then you can use snippets to do just that. I'm going to assume you already know Grammarly has a grammar and spelling checker. If you are interested in this particular feature, in my Grammarly video review, I do compare it to the standard grammar and spell checker you get in your operating system. But too long, didn't read, the Grammarly spelling and grammar checker will catch and fix more issues. In fact, it will help you find and fix multiple errors that you can accept or reject at a click. I use this feature all the time. Before I go into detail about the key Grammarly features to check out, a quick primer. So Grammarly will basically scan your piece of writing and provide four different types of suggestions that you should consider. Now for the purposes of this video, I'm going to ignore the style guide because that's a Grammarly business feature. So if you're short on time, simply focus on the correctness report. These are the grammar errors that you really need to fix. Consider them critical to review. Next up is the clarity report, and this will help you with the readability of your work. So if you find that your piece is just difficult to understand, or perhaps the readability score isn't great, and you have a little bit more time, then look at these suggestions. Grammarly will propose sentences that you can rephrase at a click. It only takes a few minutes or a few minutes extra to do, but it is a report worth looking at. The next report you may want to look at is the engagement report. So this specifically relates to word choice. So if you find yourself overusing specific terms or phrases, spend a bit more time on this report. Now, I don't have a huge amount of engagement issues in this piece of writing, but while I'm here, did you know that I could double click on any word and Grammarly will propose synonyms? Let me show you an example. When NFTs took off in early 2021, I immediately bought some. So if I double click on immediately, Grammarly will give me three different words that I can use and put into my work. Again, a real time saver and it saves me looking for the thesaurus or dictionary. The final report relates to the tone of your writing. I'll show you an example of how the tone detector works in a moment, but suffice to say, I don't spend as much time using this particular report unless I really want to make sure the piece is perfect. So in summary, start with correctness, then look at clarity. And if you have a bit more time, you can look at the engagement and delivery reports, but you will need to customize the goal for your work in question. One of my favorite Grammarly features is the plagiarism checker. Now suffice to say, this is a Grammarly premium feature, but I use it all the time to check my work and also to check work by other writers. Does this mean I'm plagiarizing? No, certainly not. I simply use the plagiarism checker if I have an article on my website that I think somebody else could have plagiarized. Here's one particular article. It's a review of Masterclass. And I've used this plagiarism checker to find other websites, took this article verbatim and published it on their site. And then I was able to issue a DMCA takedown request. When I was a freelance writer, I also used this tool to find missing citations. So I'd plug a quote or some statistics into this and Grammarly would surface the link for me that I could subsequently add. Conversely, when I'm interviewing a freelance writer who's going to produce content for Become a Writer Today or some of the other sites that I run, I use this plagiarism checker as part of that vetting process at the initial interview stage. It's a real time saver. It only takes a couple of minutes or even less if it's a short article to run a quick plagiarism check on your work. And it comes bundled with your Grammarly premium subscription. I sometimes get emails from fiction writers saying that they can't really use Grammarly because they have weird character names or unusual locations or perhaps spells and so on that they want to write about. But Grammarly keeps saying that these are errors and mistakes. Well, did you know you can use the Grammarly custom dictionary to get around this problem? So simply navigate to your dictionary in the settings section on the web app and Grammarly will stop recognizing these as grammar or spelling mistakes. So as an example, a while ago, I was writing some freelance articles about cryptocurrency and there was specific language for cryptocurrency, for example, HODL and DeFi. These terms or jargon are recognized within the cryptocurrency world. However, they're still regarded as typos and spelling mistakes by most grammar checkers. So I added them to my personal dictionary and now they no longer come up as an issue in these freelance articles. While you're in the customized section, why not take a look at the various rules that Grammarly refers to when it's identifying grammar and spelling mistakes in your work. So as an example, Grammarly was regularly suggesting that I should straighten my apostrophes and also my quotation marks. That's a fine suggestion. The only thing is I publish my work online and typically WordPress will take care of this. And I found this suggestion a bit of a distraction. So I just simply turned it off. Unless you're writing literary fiction or perhaps poetry, it's the job of every writer to say things as clearly and concisely as possible. That means using everyday language that your readers can understand. 
It means making sure that your work has a good readability score. Now you could use a readability checker online or you could use Grammarly. Simply paste your article into the web app, then click on the overall score. Now you're going to look for the readability score report. And if this is above 60 or 70, chances are your work is okay. If it's below 60 or 70, and you're not writing for a specific audience, for example, academia or business, you may want to simplify those complicated terms or terms and phrases inside of your article. Now, I really like this report inside of Grammarly. Here's why. A year ago, I was narrating a audiobook that I wrote during the lockdown. And I wanted to figure out how much time I'd need to book in the studio to narrate sections from this book. So I pasted in chapters one by one into Grammarly and it gave me some markers about how long it would take me to narrate or speak the chapter in question. This particular article is about a thousand words and according to Grammarly, it would take me five minutes to narrate it. Now clearly I would need a bit more time to allow for mistakes and so on, but this did help me plan how long to spend in studio with my audio book. Even if you're not narrating an audio book, you still may find the metrics related to character count, word count and sentence structure handy. And if you're editing work by another writer, you can download this as a report if they don't have Grammarly premium access and send it to them. You can also customize how Grammarly works using its goals section. Now in my Grammarly tutorial, I go into extensive detail about how to use each one of these goals, but I'll summarize it briefly here for you. Usually it's fine to go with general, general and neutral, and this will get you all of the changes that you need to make in a piece of writing. However, if you're writing something academic, you may want to change this setting because Grammarly will give you a different type of metric that you can use to analyze your work. So you'll notice it's immediately asked me if I'm writing an essay report or something else and asked about my preferred citation style. This will also customize the suggestions that Grammarly proposes. I'll show you an example in detail. So if I go back to general for a second and look at this sentence here, it's picking one good idea and seeing it through to fruition. So you can see here that this is an abbreviation. However, if I go to goals and change this to academic, and now if I click on done, Grammarly will rescan the document and it will flag this as a contraction, which may be seen as too informal in academia. Now it's up to you to decide whether these make sense or not, depending on your piece and your intended audience. If you find yourself writing a lot of academic or professional works, Grammarly is in the middle of rolling out a citation generator. Now it only works on a couple of different websites like Wikipedia, but it also works on journals that you may use or you may cite. So simply make sure Grammarly is installed as a plugin in Chrome. And then when you visit a journal like on PubMed or in Wikipedia, look for the get citation option. And now you can click on this and Grammarly will automatically give you a citation that you can copy to your clipboard. And of course you can change this from APA to MLA to Chicago, or you can just simply uh, copy an in-text citation that you can use instead. Now, if for some reason you find a citation generator that does not appear, that's because firstly it's in beta, so I expect support to be rolled out across more websites, but you can use grammarly.com forward slash citations to create that citation manually. You can also use Grammarly as a type of document library. Now, personally, I usually write articles in Ulysses or in another Markdown app, or sometimes in Google Docs. But if I need to grammar check an article, I'll sometimes paste it into the Grammarly web app instead of using the plugin. That's because the act of copying and pasting from one app to another helps me sometimes see issues that I've mixed or missed. So in this case, you can see I have dozens of different articles in my Grammarly library. I can simply click on new to add an article or a document at any time. Or alternatively, I can click on upload and then I can upload a Word document or a rich text file. Again, this is a bit of a time saver and helps me edit my work on the go. One new Grammarly feature that I find myself using more and more is the tone detector. This works particularly well if you find yourself writing a lot of emails or social media posts, but you don't really want to be going backwards and forwards between your social media app and Grammarly and a writing app. So you just install the Grammarly plugin for your browser and then the tone detector should work in the background. So as an example, I've opened up Gmail and I've pasted in a sample formal resignation email, quitting my job, the daydream. So you'll see here that the floating icon appears at the bottom right. Now, if I click on the floating G icon, Grammarly will propose suggestions based on the tone of my piece. So it's proposing I rewrite this sentence here to, I'd like you to please consider. It's a subtle change, which will make my email sound more personable if that is my intention. Grammarly also has a keyboard, which you can use for iPhone or Android. 
you can install it via the web app that I showed you previously or on the App Store. Once you've installed and set it up, it's pretty easy to use. Just write on your iPhone or your mobile device as normal. And then when you're finished, just change your keyboard or look for the Grammarly icon. So I have some text here with a typo. If I click on the Grammarly icon, it'll take or take a moment to scan it. And then I can automatically accept or reject those suggestions by tapping on the Grammarly suggestion. Similarly, at any time, I can change how the Grammarly keyboard works by clicking on the cog and it will automatically give me the different settings, including for the tone detector, the type of keyboard that I want to use, whether I want to look at emojis and so on. Those are just a selection of the key Grammarly features which you should check out. I was talking to the Grammarly team recently and they have some exciting new features in plan for 2023. And I'll profile those in future videos. If you'd like to see them, don't forget to subscribe. Now, if you do find Grammarly useful, remember many of these features are Grammarly Premium only. I do have a discount for Grammarly Premium, which is an affiliate discount, meaning I earn a small commission. And I'll put a link to that in the notes below this video. If you have more questions about using Grammarly, be sure and ask me in the comments section as well.